This is the first Templar, and this game kinda sucks. It has no original mechanics, a terrible first impression, and character models that give this bloke a run for his money. My expectations going into this game couldn't have been any lower. It ominously sat in my Steam library for ages, probably as the result of some bundle, but I still don't know where it actually came from. One day, me and a mate were looking for something with an online co-op campaign, which if you've tried to do this, it's actually not quite as easy as you'd think. It's especially a problem when you find Left 4 Dead to be kind of rubbish, but let's not go there. We flicked through our Steam libraries before coming across the 2009 runaway smash hit The First Templar. Don't worry, hadn't heard of it either. This game greets you with a launch window, which forces you to log into some arbitrary Calypso account. Once the game actually launches, you need to make another separate account just to play online. On top of playing this through Steam, it took three separate logins to different accounts just to actually play this game. Why? Once you're finally in, things aren't too pretty. The voice acting is all over the place, the characters look and act like this, and the netcode, if you could even call it that, is so bad that the enemies teleport around you in almost every fight. The First Templar really punctuates itself with that Eastern European jank that so many games developed over there have. But like a good disease, the First Templar grew on me. It features a schlocky Holy Grail story starring Templar Kellyan and his two companions, two-hand white guy Roland and sassy corset armor girl Marie, who for whatever reason fights like a ninja with her jewel daggers. Taking place in a multitude of locations like cities, castles, and dungeons, you run into a plethora of other goofy characters that are always a laugh. I found the story to have that so bad it's good level of charm to it, and the pacing and gameplay variety allowed me to enjoy it. Yeah. My little mousetraps got us another Templar. Surrender your weapons! Guards! Get your daggers ready. Oh, that guy was a fraud. Hey, Wait, sir. I shall take care of these two. Roland. Roland. <laughs> Roland. You mean he's alive? Puts you in a very dangerous position tonight. With a mix of hack and slash left clicking, somewhat broken stealth sections, and some occasionally broken puzzles, I didn't actually find myself getting bored with these uninspired mechanics. Though many fights dragged on, the level design in this game is actually alright, and on the rare occasion, quite good. Interestingly, the levels gradually get better and better as the game goes along, and strangely they start to look better too. They sprinkle in optional objectives throughout the levels which utilize the multiple paths and side areas, which is pretty cool, and every so often you run into silly little situations like this which really lighten up the vibe. Fly my thingy! It was shiny! So very, very shiny! Shh. I suppose we could look for it. Now you've gone, man, as well. We've got to go! <laughs> the combat is super basic, but it flows well enough so that it isn't too frustrating or unsatisfying. Each character feels different enough, though Kellyan is much smoother than the other characters, which is pretty dodgy. Each main character has an upgrade tree, which stupidly only the server host could manage, where you can add stats and abilities. But you'll never need to use the abilities in combat, because the combat is so easy. It's a bummer, but it's not a deal breaker. The stealth is actually quite fun when it works. It's just basic avoiding line of sight and taking out people from behind, complete with Kona visions on the minimap. There's such a simple satisfaction from snapping necks, the noise is so blissful. <laughs> Unfortunately, it doesn't always work. People see you when they shouldn't, probably because of the dodgy netcode, and a couple of times the game forces failures if you get caught, which always sucks. Again, it's a bummer, but it's never a deal breaker. Then there's the puzzles, which are a bit of a highlight. Set in underground chambers complete with spike traps, fire traps, arrow traps, and every other trope of a trap you can think of, they harken back to so many cheesy adventure movies. Most noteworthy is that the puzzles are almost always designed around cooperation, where you need a partner to complete it, and that's pretty damn cool. Annoyingly, a lot of the netcode stuff kinda broke a lot of the traps, but because I like sounding like a broken record, it's never a deal breaker. So nothing about the gameplay works properly, and none of it is really all that new, yet it all comes together to create something way more fun than it has any right to be. The gameplay is very just enough to be enjoyable, or at least tolerable. The pacing is just fast enough to not be fatiguing, the level design is just good enough to be interesting, the length of the game is just short enough to not overstay its welcome, and the visual variety between locations is straight up quite good. 
There are so many dumb little moments dotted in that are just hilariously bad, but it's so amusing. The catch is, and there's always a catch, is that it's only fun in co-op. Playing this game single player is depressingly boring, and even if you do find a friend, make sure it's the right friend. This is by all means a game you laugh at rather than with, and I'm sure it wouldn't click with most people. Though me and my mate had a good time, it's really not a good game. All of my praise towards this game is rose-tinted through a co-op lens, as it's more of a dumb, fun social activity, like watching a So Bad It's Good movie. Though I haven't tried it, the split-screen mode on PC apparently works quite well, and as a way of avoiding all the netcode issues, I think this would be the best way to play it. It was also released on the 360, so maybe check out that version too if you're actually interested. Looking at this game analytically, the most interesting thing about it is how it actually achieves that so bad it's good status. Video games only rarely have that appeal, and I think it's because as a player you need to actively work and pay attention in them. Oppose this to movies, which are a passive experience, so it's much easier to enjoy the B-gradeness. Earlier this week, I went to see the Assassin's Creed movie in the cinemas, and it was pretty terrible, but I had a great time picking it apart and having a laugh at how poorly it was put together. I'll admit that I can be very easily pleased under the right circumstances. The first Templar pulls off its B-movie charm almost like the developers knew what they were doing. I think this is thanks to the effortlessness of the combat and the decent pacing. You never really feel frustrated or annoyed with the game, it just lets you unhinge and enjoy its ineptitude. It might now sound like I actually kind of love this game, but I wouldn't recommend it to most people. Let's not pretend there aren't much better ways to spend your time than with the first Templar. But if this game sounds like what you're after, and you're in the unlikely situation that you have a friend who's also down, then go for it. Objective. Don't land on any bear trap, up. Oh, fuck! <laughs> oh my god. What? <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Oh, I'm so paranoid. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Freaking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Why were there so many? <laughs> like, you get out of one, and it's just instantly into another one. Won't. Oh man, this cutscene's great. Escape! Oh, okay, damn. I was, I was curious. 